You ought to worship the devil. You ought to serve him. Be honest. If he's your father, be faithful to him. That's what Christ said. Jesus don't play games with hypocrites. Jesus ain't interested in the cross-eyed and double-minded. Jesus said, I want that thou art hot or cold, but because you move forward, you know what that means? Because you're looking at the world and going to church. Because you read the Bible and watch pornography. Because you take my name in your lips, but don't have my word hidden in your heart. Jesus said, I'll spit you out. Isn't that something? Let me tell you something. Oh, praise God. Sometimes you have an upset stomach. Take Pepto-Bismol. It'll make you puke. Get rid of all that filth in your guts. Jesus said, he don't want a lukewarm man hanging around in him. He said, he'd spit that man out. Isn't that something? God still has bowel movements. Isn't that something? There's something called the body of Christ. And when his stomach's upset, he still spits me out. Will he spit you out? In John chapter 8, those Jews met the Son of God as they left the synagogue. All of them to trace their ancestry back to Abraham. And Jesus said, Abraham's not your daddy. He said, if Abraham was a father, you'd love God, you'd serve God. God leaving the church and Jesus will tell you you hadn't deceived me son you hadn't deceived me you hadn't tricked me you can trick the preacher he's only got eyes like a man but nobody will trick the son of God he has eyes like a flame of fire praise God you can tell him listen praise the Lord you can tell me that what you got is 24 karat gold but when a man takes that fire of gold and puts it over an open flame, that fire will tell the truth. If that gold has impurities to float to the top or drop to the bottom, I know that man, he isn't dealing with pure gold. And when a man stands before Christ, he'll stand over an open flame. The eyes of God will try that man. Praise God. That man, that man, they have wound up in front of Jesus. Just left church. Just read the Bible. Just prayed. Just fasted. Just talked to his friends about God. And when he stands before Jesus, Christ will pass the man before an open flame. I'm not talking about the flames of hell yet. I'm talking about the flames that burn in the eyes of the Son of God. How? How will you do on that day when Jesus marches you before his throne? It don't matter how you dress. You can wear a bow tie. Let me tell you something. Jesus won't call you, sir. You can wear a dress. Jesus won't call you, ma'am. How will you be on that day? Where will you stand on that day? How will you work to be? How will God judge you? On that day, the nation of Israel, they said, Abraham is our father. Today, we don't make an appeal to Abraham. The Jew in the first century, he made an appeal to Abraham. In our day, we don't say, Abraham is our father. But in our day, when men hear the gospel preached, they say, I go to church. Uh oh Praise the Lord. It doesn't make a difference if you go to church. I can tell you, there wasn't a synagogue in Jerusalem that Satan didn't visit when the Son of God marched its streets. Oh, praise God. When Jesus met the Jew in the first century, he said, Abraham's my father. And when Jesus meets men today, they say, I go to church. Some men say, I read the Bible. Other men say, I'm a Christian. Some men say, my daddy's a preacher. Oh, let me tell you, 
That doesn't amount to a hill of beans. It's good for nothing but the stone hill. That's what Christ said. When you stand before Jesus, don't look around. Seven, seven billion people walk the earth today. Seven billion people walk the earth today. And Jesus Christ knows every one of them by name. But when that one man stands before Christ, seven billion people won't come to the mind of God. It will be Christ and one man. Christ and that one man. When you stand before Jesus, you won't hide behind seven billion other people. The eyes of God, the eyes of God will be fixed on you. You won't outrun them. You won't trick them. There'll be nothing you can do when you stand before God. Do you even know where you're going? Do you even know where you're going? Do you even know how your life will end? Praise the Lord. I know how my life will end. Jesus said that He'll let me sit with them on the throne of God if I overcome. And bless God, let me share with you. I'm overcoming the world today. Isn't that something? I don't take the world's drugs. I don't drink the world's beer. I don't laugh at the world's jokes. I don't watch the world's movies. I don't hang out with the children of the world. I have very little dealings with the world. Do you know why? Because Jesus Christ makes me soar with the wings of an eagle. And Jesus said, if I'll just keep flying high, praise God, one day, men will look for me. And the Bible says, he not walk not because God opened. One day, my life here will end, but my life will never end. I'm eternal, do you hear? I'll live forever in the kingdom of God and Christ. No sorrow in that city. No, no crying. No suffering. No perverted TV shows. No filthy movies. No dirty jokes. Angels don't laugh at that filth. I'm going there. I'm going there. Praise God. Are you? Are you going there? Are you going to that city, the Bible says, that has foundations? That city doesn't have one foundation. The city of God sits on twelve foundations. Are you going there? Don't answer too quick. Don't say, I go to church. That ain't what I ask. I said, are you going to that city? Oh, praise God. Consider what you have in your home. Do you watch things that God hates? Do you listen to what God hates? Do you talk about what God hates? If you do, you're not going to that city. I'm going there because Christ makes me overcome. Earth. A lot of people complain 
about the condition of America, and yet most people that complain want nothing to do with the Lord Jesus. about the condition of America. And yet I find that most people who complain, they don't want Jesus in their homes. On one occasion, the multitudes came to Christ after he preached the sermon. And the Bible says they wanted to take Jesus and make him a king. <laughs> you know, if you're not careful, you think that they cared about Christ, that they loved Christ. But let me tell you something. Let me catch you up to speed. Those men didn't love Christ. Those men wanted Jesus to be a king because they were tired of Rome. They were tired of taxes. They were tired of conscious pirates. So they wanted to come and make Jesus Christ their king. But those same men didn't want Jesus Christ as Lord. Oh, listen. Most men who complain about America they want God to bless them, but they don't want God to judge them. Most people want the riches of God's kingdom, but they don't want the righteousness in God's kingdom. They want heaven, but they do not want holiness. Do you hear? I say you can't have it both ways. Where are you going? The truth is, the great majority of people alive today want nothing to do with God. The truth is, the great majority of people want nothing to do with God. They don't want to serve God. They don't want to listen to God. They don't want to be with God. They push God out of their homes. They push God out of their cars. You might say, I've never pushed God out. Stop right there. When's the last time you watched the rated R movie? I say, God wasn't sitting next to you. When's the last time you listened to filth on the radio? God wasn't sitting next to you. Every time you choose this world, you chose to kick God out. Every time you take a car trip and you turn the radio on and play music that God hates, God steps out. Oh, praise God. Now let me ask you. Do you honestly think you can spend your whole life pushing God out the car and pushing God out your home and pushing God out the job and pushing God off the couch? Do you think you can go your whole life pushing God around and stand before Him on the day of judgment and He's going to let you in? You really think you can push God out every day of your life and He's going to let you in? If you spend your whole life pushing God around, you've told Him you don't want Him. Do you know why? Do you know why men go to hell? Let me tell you why. Men go to hell because when God showed up, and tried to save them. They didn't want to be saved. Why are we pretending? Why are we pretending? Why do we pretend we can't help it? Praise the Lord. Why do we pretend we don't know better? Why do we pretend to be struggling? There ain't no struggle in this life that Jesus can't set you free from. Do you know why you're struggling? Because you want to struggle. I can tell you, 
If you wanted the Lord Jesus as much as you wanted Him, He set you free. If you wanted Christ as much as you want a man, or as much as you want a woman, praise God. If you wanted Jesus as much as you want this world, He set you free. Why are we pretending? The Bible says when you seek me with the whole heart, you'll find me. Why don't men find God? Because they seek God with part of the heart. And with the other part of the heart, they seek drugs. They seek fornication. They seek this world. And they never find God. God said, if you'll seek me with the whole heart, you'll find me. God said, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Have you heard his voice? Not over the bullhorn. Have you heard his voice in your heart? The gentle tug of God's Spirit. King David said in Psalm 18, he said, Thy gentleness hath made me great, praise God. There comes a moment in the lives of men when the blessed Holy Ghost of God He interrupts the course of everyday life and the Spirit of God He will arrest the man in his affections He pricks the heart He disturbs the conscience He troubles the waters and in that moment if men would turn to God they find the They find God can still be found. God can still be found. But how do you look? You look with the whole heart. Oh, praise God. You won't find God with the eye. You won't hear Him with this physical ear. There's too many distractions in this world. Too much, too much, praise God. Too much entertainment, too many billboards, too many distracting t-shirts. You won't find God with the natural eye. You won't hear Him with the ear. There's too many voices in this world. They crowd out the voice of God. But how can God be found then? He's found with the heart. You seek Him with the heart. And you sought God with the heart. Oh, praise God. You know, some men, the Lord Jesus has to bring very low. Like the prodigal son. The boy got so low and so bad off. He wanted to eat slop with pigs. And then the Bible records when he came to himself. I say that's good news when men come to themselves. Well, God had to bring that young man low, and he came to himself. There was another man named Simon, and God didn't have to bring him too low. Simon had been fishing all night, couldn't catch fish, woke up, or Jesus showed up, brother. He said, Simon, do it this way. Simon said, Lord, we toiled all night, we caught nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, and he cast his net overboard and caught so many fish, the boat began to sink. When they got back to shore, Simon told Jesus, Depart from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. We have two men, the prodigal. Jesus brought him low so he could save him. We have another man, Simon. Jesus blessed him to bring him to himself. I ask you, what man are you? Have you been brought to yourself? Listen. Some of you, God has given you jobs so you can pay rent. Some of you, God has given you a job so you can pay bills. He's been good to you, but you haven't turned. I say, isn't that a shame? I say, isn't that a shame? Some of you, God's been good. He's been good, praise God. He feeds you, He's clothed you. He hasn't taken anything away from you. 
He's been pouring his blessings out upon you. And no matter what he pours out, you drink it in. You harden your heart and never come to God. I say, ain't that a shame? Other, other men praise God. God's taking things away from you. He's brought you low. He stripped you down. He stripped you bare, praise God. He's brought you till you got nothing. He's brought you not to your knees, but to the Lord. He's brought you to your feet, praise God. He's brought you to your face on the floor, and you still won't come to God. I say, what more does he have to do? I mean, what does Christ have to do? Jesus, Jesus hadn't been anything but good. Jesus hadn't been anything but good. For one sin, a man deserves hell forever. For one sin, a man deserves to be cut off from God. Never to make an appeal. Never to have a second chance. And yet God, day after day, He suffers long with you. Although you provoke Him. I say, ain't God good? Why don't you come to Christ? Why don't you come to Christ? There's nothing in this world that will not burn. The best parts of this world, it's money, it's cars, it's clothes, it's inhabitants. Every part of this world will burn. And Peter said, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all manner of holiness? I can tell you, the world is coming to an end. Every part of this world is coming to an end. The best parts, the most lovely parts, the parts of this world that you fantasize about visiting. Hawaii, maybe. The Bahamas, perhaps. Praise God. Some of you like the snow. But can I tell you, every part of this beautiful world is going to burn. Every part of this world will burn. Hawaii will burn. The tropics will burn. The snow will burn. With fervent heat, the Bible says. Now we come to plead with you to come to Christ. To come to God. To forsake it all. I mean forsake it all. If you have to lose your job to make it into heaven, lose your job, praise God. Isn't that right? God will take care of you. He feeds birds and He says, you're of more value than the little birds. If you have to lose your life to serve God, well, lose your life. It just causes your problems without God anyway. You can't manage it. If you have to lose your life to serve God, well, lose your life. What I'm telling you is that Jesus Christ is worth everything. Praise God. He's worth everything. All you've got to do is come to Him. Just come to Him. Just bow before Him and come to the man Christ Jesus. Praise God.